My name is Echo, and today I am sharing a bit of my story, and not in terms of being attached to the narrative, but in terms of, of sharing from a space of desiring connection and relatability and an understanding of processes that have occurred, not just for you, the, the viewer, but for me, myself, and I. And um, I have a mentor here. <clears throat> I'm tuning in from Mazunte, Mexico. And I have a mentor here that, you know, told me, he's like, I think that it's time for you to rewrite your story. I think it's time for you to retell your story um, in a space of a victory or from, from triumph. And the reason that I'm going to share a bit of my story is because it comes from a background of trauma and I'm working more closely with, with trauma, trauma therapy, yoga informed, uh, or trauma informed yoga and working with people as they move through processes of really transitioning like transitioning from old patterns into new be new belief systems that aren't limiting for them. And I struggled along the way to get here. And so my desire is to connect with others that are in that struggle as well. Others that um, are in the triumph as well. Just coming into a space of being able to relate to one another in a real way as we as we move through the challenging things in life. And so I won't get too detailed into the actual story because it's not the narrative that's important. It's not what happened that's important. It's what kept occurring and it's what I kept alive. It's what I carried with me. And something that I learned in one of my trauma therapy trainings that I really just hit home for me and I had this moment where it felt just like an epiphany was one of my teachers said, the worst things that could ever happen to us already have. And that hit me hard, meaning that in trauma, say we have been physically or sexually abused or neglected or abandoned as children, that is the worst thing that could happen. And so the worst thing that could happen to us already has happened and how we interact with our world as adults and as you know, growing adults, uh, sometimes we still, most of us are still acting from that adaptive child state, meaning the adaptive child is the, the, the creation in our mind of what we think an adult should be like, what they should do. They're generally very young parts of ourselves that are very defensive against the world. And so our wounded child needs that adaptive child to protect it as it's growing up. And the, the tragic thing that happens here is that generally that adaptive child goes into our adult lives and really creates havoc in our relationships with ourselves, our relationship with others, and can perpetuate this trauma cycle long after the action has ended. <clears throat> and so that is where I begin. That is where I begin because the reality is, is there were many terrible actions um, that occurred during my childhood that were very painful physically and sexually, and there was neglect and abandonment and these these aspects of trauma were very harming to me as a child but the reality is that they ended it they ended right around the age of 14. and so i was essentially you know um, an independent by that time taking care of myself and um, thought that i had it figured out and my adaptive child was powerful and she was a perfectionist and she was good at everything she was the star athlete she was good in school and uh, the teachers liked her and she she was she was smart. She was a hustler. She knew how to survive uh, in life and to get what she wanted. But what I wasn't aware of is as I got older, that adaptive child in me that didn't need anybody, the adaptive child that thought everyone would leave, that no one loved her, that she was unlovable, that she wasn't worthy, she began to push everyone away. And she was very charismatic and very charming. So she had lots and lots of friends. 
and was surrounded by people constantly. But those that got the closest to her, the, those that were the most intimate with her, that really saw her for who she was in all her glory, um, she tended to push them away. <clears throat> and that is because at the time I wasn't aware that there were these systems these cycles occurring in my mind and these limiting belief systems that came from trauma that I hadn't, that I hadn't nurtured yet. And so essentially in the past few years and really only in the past year, have I really, really dove into what it means to honor all my parts, what it means to, to really honor the wounded child, to honor the adaptive child. And you know, our protectors, our managers, all these parts that play in the mind. And if, if you've done any work with internal family systems therapy, you might understand the parts that I'm talking about. But these sub personalities in the mind, when we don't understand why we get angry very quickly or why we cry or why we have all of these intense reactions, it's because the mind is multifaceted. We have so many different parts at play. And when we don't nurture the entire system and create a family, then some of those parts can wreak a bit, bit of havoc. And so my desire working with trauma and working with, working with embodiment and working with yoga and working through healing through these embodiment practices and through these self inquiry practices is to integrate and merge the family together and to also understand that these parts aren't going anywhere, that they exist, but that we can, we can mother ourselves the way that our mothers didn't. We can father ourselves the way our fathers didn't. We can nurture the aspects of our um, childlike versions the way that we weren't nurtured. And that's powerful. You know, it's, it's, um, there's another quote, I'm sure I'm going to butcher it, but you know, it says something like we never knew as children, um, that the people that we were looking to save us were going to be ourselves as adults. And that's the work here. So if you have been through trauma, if you have, um, if you have this, these core beliefs that you're not good, or if you feel shame or guilt, or if you struggle believing that you're lovable or that you're worthy and you get stuck on needing to be perfect and needing to be anything in order to be loved, what I'm here to tell you is that just as you are right now in this very moment is love. Like you are love, you are the energy of love. And this is, this is all that you need to be. If there's anything else, if you become a more educated version of yourself and you understand these parts of yourself and you can explain those to people and show those parts to you in a more vulnerable way, then that's beautiful and that will enrich your relationships. But as you are right now in this very moment, you are lovable, you are worthy, you do have the right to be here, you are important. And I needed somebody, I thought I needed somebody to tell me that a long time ago. I needed somebody that I trusted somebody outside of myself to give me that so that I could believe it. And it took 36 years getting to the point now where I actually realized that only I can create that love for myself. Only my relationship with myself can bring in that wholeness, can bring in that unity of all my parts and all my emotions and everything that is me. Um, only I can provide that. And so for many of us that have survived and that are thriving um, as, as people that have been subjected to trauma, whether it's in childhood or in adulthood, we carry, you know, we carry remnants of that battle with us every day. And they go into um, the relationships that help us to feel like we're loved and the relationships that help us feel like we're important and smart and the relationships that help us feel connected to community. And until we can really embrace and integrate those parts of our, our life, they can affect us and they can affect us in really unhealthy ways that become very toxic. And so what I encourage for you and ask for you is to, to really look at yourself and to look at the relationships that you have. Are they repeating? Are you finding the same patterns in relationships? Um, are, do things end in really 
unstable ways with you, whether it's friendships, relationships, or your working collaborations? Are there many people in the world that you don't have closure with? Um, are there people that you've cut out of your life uh, for specific reasons that you feel guilt for? Are there people that you want in your life, but there is this feeling that you're not good enough or that you're not deserving? These are all symptoms. These are all symptoms of trauma. And what I had to realize from my trauma is that this belief system that I had, this limiting belief system that I wasn't worthy and that I wasn't lovable, that wasn't a belief system. It was a symptom. It was a symptom of my chronic um, PTSD. You know, it was a symptom of the trauma that I had. It wasn't my belief. I actually didn't believe that. If I really looked to the core, I knew that I was worth loving. I knew that I was worthy, but I kept convincing myself that I wasn't. And that adaptive child kept wreaking havoc on my relationships. And so sometimes it's as simple as educating ourselves in trauma language and working with a trauma therapist and doing parts work, all of these different resources that are available to us in the world. Sometimes it's as easy as hearing what you've been experiencing with language to it and relatability to another person that's been through it and understands it to be like, oh, this is what I've been experiencing this entire time and I didn't understand how to explain it. But now that I have the words and now that I can see it, it doesn't seem so frightening anymore and I know I can change it. And so that's what I, um, I'm here to share is no matter the, the painful experiences that we've been through. And I know that I have no idea what you've been through. And I do not want to um, belittle the bigness of, of anyone's trauma because it is, it is big. And the story is important for quite some time. But at some point when we want to heal and we really want to move forward, we have to let ourselves drop the narrative and go deep within that shadow work and find those parts of ourselves that are still in the trauma, that are still flashing back and that are still creating toxic relationships of you know, codependency and guilt and shame and all of these different aspects that come into relationship when we have that trauma. We have to go deep diving down into our shadows to nurture and to love those part of ourselves. Not to say, what are you doing? You're so wrong. Why are you doing this? You're ruining everything. But to say, ah, I see you and I understand why you're doing what you've done because it used to be a survival strategy and it helped us. And if it weren't for you, my beautiful adaptive child <coughs> or my wounded child, I wouldn't have got to where I was because you helped me to survive. But these ways of being and these ways of acting out, they're not serving us anymore. They're not survival strategies. They're taking away from the goodness in our life and we could do much better. So how do I nurture you? How do I care for you? How do I give love and take care of you in a way that we could be a team? We can be a family stepping forward. And how about you let me drive the wheel? And you stay back here. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to take care of you. But let me be the one who talks. Let me be the one that connects. And you let me know what's happening for you. So that is the beginning. That is just identifying what it is. Um, identifying the survival strategies, the coping mechanisms that the adaptive child um, has has really brought forward into your adult life and finding a way to nurture and reintegrate the adaptive child into the family so that we could step forward in a more harmonious way. So that is my share for today. And thank you so much for listening. I hope that that rings some bells for your own stories and um, looking forward to seeing you again in the future. Mm -hmm.